everybody. I am your host, Michelle Lawrence, and we are back with another episode of Black Tea, the podcast that is all about Black women in advertising, presented by Muse by Cleo. And I am so glad today to be here with someone, another international episode we got going here. I'm um, talking today with Ash Phillips. Hey, Ash. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming on. And um, please do tell people what you do and where you're based. Yes. So I'm based in Montreal, Canada, the very French city in Canada. Um, and I am the co-founder and creative director of my own creative agency called Cis Sankiem. Um, and basically what we do, we specialize in branding. So we help businesses, entrepreneurs discover really who they are, really help them define their brand at their core. And we give them the tools to communicate what that brand is in the most authentic way possible that's really cool so really focus on a really a focus on branding and at your shop Mm -hmm. okay Mm -hmm. that's amazing and you are starting your own business um you have started your own business very early in advertising or in your life I would say I'm wondering how you found your way into advertising uh from the beginning and um how you how you got to this point yeah um so I actually my background is in graphic design so I actually studied graphic design in college and um, coming out of college you know the typical thing is to pursue your studies in university or you know, find a job at an agency. I kind of wasn't really interested in either because um, at the end of my schooling, I was kind of burnt out a little bit. I kind of needed to take a break. So um, I ended up just going with the flow a little bit, freelancing here and there, um, taking you know, small internships at different agencies or small jobs at, at, at like small like startup agencies. Um, and I quickly discovered that I wasn't super passionate about um, the work environments I was in. Uh, it kind of sucked all the joy out of design that I, that I initially had. And um, during that time, I actually also met my partner and co-founder, Miro, and he was kind of going through a similar situation and so when we linked up and started collaborating at the time he was doing like freelance creative direction and like you know directing music videos and things like that for local artists we started collaborating and figured out that um, we made a really great team we complemented each other very well our skills complemented each other Um, and so we started collaborating together a lot and making a little bit of a name for ourselves in Montreal and eventually it was like, okay, well, we're known as this duo, um, might as well make it official and turn this into something real, turn this into uh, a creative agency. And that's what we ended up doing. That's really cool. Um, and so brave, uh, I, I have to say, and I know I probably sound like such a millennial. Um. <laughs> <laughs> in framing it that way but there is uh an audacity that it takes to just sort of listen to yourself and listen to your passions and say you know what I'm not going to go the route that I'm supposed to go um mm-hmm. an extra an extra decade or so decade and a half to get myself to that point after college I was very much laser focused on and the next step is this and the next step is this and the next yeah. step is so kudos to you for breaking free of that and being able to just kind of follow what makes sense for you and what feels like mm-hmm. you know it's gonna it's gonna actually fulfill you and and put your put your creative skills to use in a way that that serves you so that's uh, yeah um, that's dope um thank you Okay, so I want to talk about you as a business owner and, um, you know, in kind of doing things your own way, how do you think about the notion of success? Um, What makes your business or a business successful in your view? And has your definition changed um, or evolved with experience at all? Yeah, it definitely, my definition of success has definitely evolved. I think at first when we started our business, um, we were kind of defining success by what we saw other agencies were doing or looked like, or 
uh, by the way that they operated. And so we were kind of trying to emulate that a little bit, but um, quickly, you know, we realized that that didn't really work for us. It didn't really um, sit well with us because we, you know, we initially started our agency because we we're trying to break out of uh, a specific mold um, or way of doing things or set the next steps. And then we ended up into another way of doing things that wasn't really ours. It was kind of just like looking at, okay, this is how other agencies or creatives operate. So that's how we're supposed to operate. Um, and what that looked like was like this um, grind culture, burnout culture, you know, um, being super at the mercy of your clients and kind of like having this scarcity mindset, like desperate for work and um, you know, not really setting healthy boundaries um, and having healthy relationships with clients as well. So that brought us back to this feeling of, you know, I'm not, I don't feel passionate about this anymore. Um, and so that initial idea of what a successful agency, how a successful agency is run had to evolve. Like when we, you know, we, we got to a point where we we're kind of burnt out. We we're like, okay, why are we why are we choosing to operate like this? We're our own boss. We can make our own rules. Mm -hmm. um, we could do things how we want to do them. Um, and so we started to shift our way of operating. Uh, so now we work in a way that really prioritizes um, the individuals behind the agency, really prioritizes like ourselves, our collaborators, so that we don't get to a point where we're super burnt out um, and that we're also we're always in kind of like a, a healthy space where we can really give and do our best work um, because we're we're in a we're in a mindset and in a space where we're not burnt out and we're actually enjoying the work that we're doing. And I think that's what success is, and that's kind of what I want to maintain as we grow because we're still babies, we're still young, um, we're still a small agency, but I want to be able to find a way to make that a sustainable model um, and turn that into kind of an example for how agencies should operate. Yeah. So you kind of touched on my next question, which was, um, you know, what you're aiming to do differently with your agency versus the ones that you've uh, had experience working at. And I'm hearing that the biggest issue really was, uh, is burnout and um, inspiration. Um, I'm wondering if there are other things that are different that you're finding different or what you're doing um, to to keep your collaborators uh, inspired um, and to keep your your place functioning differently. How do you protect that? Um, I think that it's really about making sure that you set strong boundaries from the get go. Um, because I think that initial interaction with clients is what's going to set the tone for the rest of your relationship with that client. Mm -hmm. And so when we're, you know, our, our, our initial um, first touch point, we try to make it um, come from a, a perspective of, you know, we're the professionals, we know what we're doing um, and commanding like that respect from our clients um, so that, when we're collaborating, they really feel like this is a this is a collaborative thing that we're doing. Whatever projects that we're working on, this is a collaborative thing that we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, we're kind of here to help each other. We're not order takers. We're not here to be yes men. We're not here to um, just take your money um, because we're not desperate to take your money. So I think the way that um, we're trying to maintain that maintain that is by making sure that we're only taking on projects that we're actually passionate about and being okay saying no to certain opportunities that aren't really in alignment with um, our values and the way that we want to operate. And you know, if it does turn into something unhealthy, just by maintaining that, having that transparency, having a transparent relationship where, with our clients where we can really speak to them on a human level, um, and let them know what's up. Wow, that's really cool. Um, it's interesting, you know, when you when you have your own business, you don't get to just be a designer. You don't get to just be a creative. Mm -hmm. You have to also take on the role of managing the accounts, 
as well as managing the projects and it is kind of like wearing several hats um so um is that something that when you were starting your own business that you were excited to dive into um like oh i can't you know i love client interfacing or i love you know making sure things are on schedule and on track or is that something that you um that you take with the good um i think for me it at first, it was kind of difficult to um, remove myself from being so in the work. Mm -hmm. um, it took some time for me because at first it was me doing all the design work. Mm -hmm. um, and now we work with we work with our a small team of designers. So it was difficult for me to kind of take that step back and like switch into more of a creative director role rather than the actual per the person doing the actual work. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, I mean, like you said, I think there are more, um, you know, the boring parts of running an agency or running a business in general that maybe aren't so fun, but I think uh, it helps that I have a partner. It helps that we're a duo because he kind of takes on more of that stuff that I don't really like doing and he doesn't mind doing that. So it balances out. Yeah, that's nice. Um, okay, so I want to talk about something that you like to do just for inspiration on the side. Um, and, and I hear that you are really into cooking. Um, how did you get into cooking? Was it something that was like part of your upbringing or is it was it a new discovery that you made? Um, yeah, I'm a big foodie. Uh, and I think it was part of my upbringing because my mom would cook all the time. Every meal was a home cooked meal. Um, and so she didn't really sit me down and teach me how to cook. I kind of just learned from observing how she does it. And that's just all that I knew growing up. So I brought that with me when I, you know, became an adult and started living on my own. I, you know, most of my meals are, are homemade. Um, and because I'm a huge foodie, I love food. I love trying new recipes. I love, um, to me, food and cooking is its own artistry. It's 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 like an art. You're 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 playing with the senses. You're bringing new flavors together. You're 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 creating something new every time. Yeah. Um, and I love that. It's just another form of creativity for me. I love that. What is the most um, beautiful dish you've ever made? Like when you finished it, you were just like, ah, oh, ah, oh, I outdid myself. <laughs> That's so hard because literally every meal I make I try to make it like I'm kind of like uh neurotic about it but like I try to like plate all my plates beautifully and like I'm super into the presentation of all of my meals it's really difficult to choose just one meal uh damn I I, I don't think I'd be able to tell you <laughs> top three um <laughs> I made kind of like this um, deconstructed like vegan poke bowl. So it was plated really nicely with like the vegetables and that was really cute. Um, another thing I made, and by the way, I, I'm mainly plant-based. So I, I, I eat fish sometimes, but I, so that's why I'm saying vegan, but um, what's something else that I made? Like this KFC style um, fried mushrooms, amazing with like a nice potato salad on the side. Cool. Um, last thing I'll ask you is, are there any uh, black owned or just black products or services or companies that you are really loving right now that are inspiring you that you want to shout out? Mm, yes, there are a lot of dope black uh, you know, black owned businesses, uh, you know, local to Montreal. Um, one that I'll shout out is, uh, I'll shout out a couple. So there's uh, Armoire, which is a clothing brand by Marcus Troy. That's super dope. Um, there's this digital uh, marketing agency called The Study, uh, founded by Rama who is amazing. We've worked with her in the past. That's cool. I don't think a lot of us here in the States are aware of um, the Black scene um, in Montreal. So it's nice to, to hear about some local places there. Um, yeah, for sure. We'd want to share them with the, with the world as well. 
the world of whoever's watching this show. <laughs> um, but I, I just want to say uh, thank you so much for coming on. It's really a delight to talk to you. Um, you are so inspired um, to do great work, and I really can't wait to see uh, what comes out of your shop in the years to come. Um, so thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah, yeah, it's my pleasure. And everybody out there, thank you for watching uh, another episode of Black Tea. Please do check out all the other episodes at musebycleo.com slash black tea. And make sure you're following us on Instagram if you're not already at sipblacktea. And we will see y'all on the next one. Bye.